I've got a story to tell you about a wild encounter I had while working as a park ranger in one of our beautiful national parks, Yosemite. Before we dive into the heart-pounding moment, let me give you a bit of background. As a seasoned ranger, I've spent years patrolling and exploring the vast wilderness of the park. It's my duty to ensure the safety of visitors and to protect the precious ecosystems that call this place home. On this particular autumn evening, I was deep in the heart of the park, where the dense forest seemed to stretch endlessly. The leaves had turned vibrant shades of red, orange, and gold, creating a breathtaking tapestry. The air was crisp, and the forest was alive. As I made my way through the winding trails, I couldn't help but feel a sense of tranquility. The beauty of nature never fails to amaze me. But little did I know that this peaceful evening was about to take a terrifying turn. Suddenly I heard a low growl that sent chills down my spine. It was unlike anything, in a decibel that didn't sound normal. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up. My heart skipped a beat. I carefully scanned my surroundings, trying to pinpoint the source. And that's when my eyes picked up on something lurking in the shadows just a few feet away. I squinted, and I moved closer, trying to make out any details, only to be completely shocked by what I saw. It was like no other being that I had ever seen in the park. This creature's eyes glowed a piercing yellow, reflecting an eerie light in the darkness. Its fur was reddish, dirty, matted, The creature stood on two legs, towering over me with a muscular and imposing frame. We certainly did not have any indication of something like this being in the park during training. The snout was elongated, resembling that of a wolf, but its teeth were sharp and menacing, capable of inflicting serious harm for sure. Its arms were long and muscular with claws that protruded from its fingers. I couldn't believe my eyes. I was face to face with a creature straight out of hell. And now let me tell you my instincts as a ranger kicked in really quickly. I slowly reached for my radio, ready to call for backup. But just as I was about to make the call, the creature let out a blood-curdling sound that echoed through the trees. I couldn't move. My heart raced as I tried to make sense of the situation. Was this some kind of mythical beast? A legend come to life? Was I really even seeing this? I'd heard stories from fellow rangers about strange happenings in the park, but I never thought I would experience something like this firsthand. As I stood there, the creature took a step closer, with its large paws silently treading on the forest floor. Its long, sharp claws glinted in the moonlight, and I knew I had to act fast. I reached for my bear spray, knowing that it was my best chance of defending myself against this unknown entity. But just as I prepared to use the spray, the creature let out a mournful wail that sent shivers down my spine again. Its eyes seemed to plead with me, as if trying to communicate. In that moment, I saw something human in its gaze, an intelligence, and a longing that I really can't explain. My instincts told me to hold my ground, to give this mysterious creature a chance. I slowly lowered my bear spray, and I took a step backwards, trying to convey that I meant no harm. The creature then tilted its head to the side, as if trying to understand my intentions, all while keeping its eyes firmly locked on mine. And then, in a flash, it turned and disappeared into the depths of the forest, leaving me standing there, bewildered, and also amazed. I couldn't believe what just happened, a close encounter with a creature that defied all logic and explanation. I did immediately then radio in to report the incident, but deep down, I knew that this was a story that would be met with skepticism and disbelief. And yet for me, it was a reminder that there are still mysteries out there, waiting to be unraveled. I was on my way to Yellowstone National Park when we had an encounter that I still barely believe. 
My buddy Mike and I were driving from Denver to Wyoming for a much-needed break from the city. The journey was long, over an eight-hour drive, but uneventful, at least until the last bit along 26 when we hit a stretch of road surrounded by trees. The car started wobbling and then suddenly jerked to the side, and I realized we had a flat tire. I managed to find a spot to pull over to the side of the road, thankfully near a bunch of trees that provided some shade in the heat. As I worked to take all of our stuff out of the trunk and wrestled getting the spare tire out and the tiny jack that came with the car, I heard a rustling sound from the forest and a noise that sounded like somebody whistling. I looked over to see a man emerging from the trees. He was tall, with a scruffy beard and a hat that covered most of his face. He looked like he had been out there a while. Need some help? he asked, with his voice gruff. No thanks, I've got it, I replied, not really wanting to engage with a stranger in the middle of nowhere. Good, he said, because I'm not here to help. I'm here to take what you've got. I couldn't believe what I was hearing, but just as I was about to respond and tell him to get lost, a low growl echoed through the forest. It was deep, and it rumbled the ground below all of us. We all turned towards the sound, and there, walking out of the trees, was a creature that looked like something from a horror movie. It was tall, standing on two legs like a human, but its body was covered in thick, dark fur. Its head was that of a dog, but larger, with ears pointed and tufts of fur at the ends, and glowing yellow eyes. I instantly knew we were encountering a dogman, a creature that I've only heard of in urban legends. The sight was both terrifying and mesmerizing. The creature was massive, with its muscular body rippling under its fur as it moved. Its eyes were focused on all three of us, looking back and forth, from the man to me to Mike, reflecting a strange intelligence that sent chills down my spine. It let out another growl, deeper this time, and the man who was threatening us moments ago looked petrified. He dropped the knife he was pointing at us and ran back into the forest, leaving us alone with the thing. I was scared, but also strangely calm. The thing didn't seem to want to hurt us. It just stood there, watching, its head moving back and forth as if it were listening, trying to study us. After a few moments of doing that, it turned around and disappeared back into the forest, the shape of it blending seamlessly with the shadows, perfectly camouflaged. I let out a sigh of relief and turned back towards the car. Thank goodness I was able to quickly change the tire and get us back on the road. Mike and I were silent for a while, each lost in our own thoughts. The adrenaline was slowly wearing off, replaced now by a sense of wonder and disbelief. We had just seen a creature that was supposed to be a myth, a legend. And yet there it was, as real as the trees around us. We decided to stop at the next town to collect ourselves, grab a bite to eat, and process what had just happened. We found a small diner, and we ordered burgers and fries, comfort food to calm our nerves. As we waited for our food, I noticed a newspaper article pinned to the wall. The headline on it read, Creature Sightings on the Rise in Yellowstone. I pointed it out to Mike, and we both checked it out. It talked about multiple sightings of a creature matching the description of what we had seen, all around Yellowstone. Some people believed it was a hoax, others were convinced it was real. The article ended with a warning to be cautious and to report any sightings to the local authorities. We both looked at each other, unsure of what to do. Should we report what we saw? Would anybody believe us? In the end, we decided to keep our encounter to ourselves. The rest of the trip was uneventful, but the encounter with that creature changed our perspective. We were more aware of our surroundings, more respectful of the wilderness. 
we realize that there were things out there that we don't understand, creatures that defy explanation. While we didn't see it again, we both thought we could feel its presence. At least it was a sense of being watched that was quite eerie. We left the park with a newfound respect for nature and all of its mysteries. As we drove back to Denver, we talked about our trip and the thing that we saw. We agreed that it was a -a once-in-a-lifetime experience, something we'd remember for the rest of our lives that most other people do not get to experience. We also agreed to keep the story to ourselves. And so, our adventure ended, not with a bang, but with a whisper. A whisper that reminded us that we are not alone. That we share this world with creatures beyond our understanding. So, I have to tell you about this wild thing that happened to me last June. I was so spooked by the whole thing that I actually put my mountain cabin up for sale. I just can't see myself feeling safe there again. I've always loved vacationing in Colorado, especially the Rocky Mountains. So much of it is untouched, and I'm a big fan of nature. Over the years, I've seen all sorts of wildlife, like elk, mountain lions, bears, deer, even a few bobcats. But I've never been scared for my life until this past summer. My cabin is located near a lake in the Rockies, close to the Colorado River. I go there by myself to chill out at least three times a year. During the winter, it's a bit tricky as you have to drive in on the rough mountain roads, and they aren't plowed in the winter. I've even snowshoed in a few times, but it's pretty tiring. These days, I tend to just go when I can drive all the way in. So I went up there in June, and I had a great week, bird-watching and hiking, listening to coyotes howl at night. And near the end of my stay, I decided to hike a trail that led to an overlook of the Colorado River Valley. It was marked as difficult in the hiking guide, but I was up for a new experience. And boy, did I get a new experience. The trail was a bit rougher than I had realized, overgrown with thorny bushes and fallen trees blocking the way. The amount of debris on the trail made me think that no one had used it for a long time. I got to the first stream crossing and I saw a fawn and a doe, which cheered me up and gave me a second wind. I then filled my water bottle and kept going, knowing I wouldn't find any more water further on. The last part of the trail involved steep rock faces but according to the guidebook, you didn't need climbing gear. There were enough handholds and footholds that a relatively fit person could navigate the boulders. I passed by a few large flat rocks that looked like a good place to eat lunch on the way down, and I made a mental note for them later. By the time I reached the top, I was sweating, but I felt like a champ, up there above the tree line and looking down at the Colorado River Valley. The breeze felt good, cooling me down, but there was this awful smell carried on the wind. It smelled like something had died nearby. I looked around to find the source, and I spotted a bit of fur visible within the tangle of undergrowth. I walked over to look, and I was shocked at what I saw. It was the remains of a deer. Its head was intact, the eyes still wide open in fright. The legs and hooves were still recognizable, but my stomach turned as I viewed the rest. The entire torso had been ripped apart, and all that was left was a hollow rib cage. I felt sick looking down at it, and I backed away quickly. It ruined my enjoyment of the overlook, so I decided to get away from the smell and climb back down to the flat rocks. At that point, lunch was the last thing on my mind, but I thought it would be nice to sit there and think about my trip. Within ten minutes, I had descended to the rock field, and I chose a nice flat spot. I sat cross-legged, and I turned my face up to the sun, trying to savor the last bit of vacation that I had. Suddenly, I heard a crashing in the bushes above me. I was startled because it sounded like something really big. I craned my neck to see, scanning the bushes, hoping it wasn't a bear. As soon as I started looking around, the noises stopped, and it was eerily silent. No bird song, and even the wind had calmed down. I tried to relax, trying to get back to my zen state, but I felt anxious. 
I couldn't shake the feeling that something was watching me. I decided to head back. It would take about a half an hour, I guessed, since it took an hour to climb up. I stood and scanned the trail above me once more, but nothing moved. I started my descent. Every few minutes I would hear a twig snap, or leaves rustle, and I would stop and wait, holding my breath and listening, but I would only be greeted by silence. I finally stopped and I called out, Hello? My voice sounded pitifully anxious. I waited, but there was no reply. I knew I wasn't imagining it, though. Something was following me. My heart started beating fast, and I had this urge to run. I tried to calm myself down, but all I could think was, if it wasn't a person following me, then it had to be some sort of animal predator. I was so glad to see the cabin about 50 yards ahead that I broke into a dead run. Immediately, I then heard a snarling sound behind me, and my throat closed with fear. I knew instinctively that the animal that had been stalking me was now rushing to attack. I dropped my pack and I raced for the door, getting inside and sliding the bolt. I ran to the window to look out and I could not believe my eyes. I've never seen anything like it. My heart started pounding so hard that it felt like my head would explode. The creature was frighteningly large, more than six and a half feet tall, and it looked like a werewolf. I know that's ridiculous, but it was on two legs, and it had the head and the fur of a dog. It was barrel-chested, extremely muscular, with its front limbs hanging low, almost to its knees. I shrank back from the window, feeling so scared and sick like I was going to faint. I heard the long claws scrape at my wooden door, scratching and growling, and I slid down the wall, sitting on the floor, praying that the thing could not get in. I could hear it moving around the perimeter of the cabin next, and a horrible stench like a wet dog began to waft through the cracks in the logs. Suddenly, its head appeared in the window, and I got a good look at its face. It looked like a creature from hell. A dog's muzzle, large fangs like a wolf, glowing red eyes. It was peering in, trying to locate me in the inside of the cabin. I stayed still and quiet, frozen with fear, hoping it wasn't smart enough to break the glass. I could hear tearing noises as it found my backpack, and then silence. I waited a long, long time before moving, my legs going numb on the cabin floor. I was afraid to give away my location if it was just faking me out. Even though I was terrified, I made myself sidle over to the window eventually and look out. The thing was gone. My backpack was in shreds. It was almost evening and I was too afraid to walk the short distance to where I was parked. So I stayed awake all night with the door bolted, afraid to even go out and use the outhouse. And then as soon as the full light of dawn broke, I made a run for it. Getting into my truck and heading back down the mountain, doors locked, stopping for no one. I haven't been back. I can't explain what I saw, but it has ruined my little cabin forever. I might buy a different place if this one sells, but it won't be in the Rockies. My name is Jack. A buddy of mine told me about this channel and said that I should share my story. I wasn't too into that at first, but I think it's about time I let it all out. So this all kicked off during a solo hiking trip that I took in Glacier National Park. I've always been a bit of a loner. I enjoy peace and quiet and solitude. I had been hiking all day, just me and the wilderness, and when I got back to my campsite, I realized that I had left my water bottle along the trail. So I decided to head back out to get it. Now I know that might sound weird, but I remembered where I'd left it, and it wasn't too far back. Also. Stupidly, it's all I had with me to use as a canteen. It was pretty dark, but I had my headlamp on, so I wasn't too worried. As I was walking, I kept noticing this strange light in the distance. It was like a spotlight, but it was flickering on and off. And also, it was coming from the sky. I thought it was odd, but I kept going. And then just a few minutes later, I saw it. This thing. At first, I thought it was a man. 
another person on the trail, but there was something off about him. It. It was too tall, too thin, and its head was too big. It was still a bit in the shadows, and it seemed like the body was frail and the eyes were deep black. But there was something behind those eyes, and I felt them sort of pull me in. Even though I knew better, there was something about that thing that drew me closer. I just kept walking closer and closer to it. And soon enough, I found myself about 15 feet from it. Now I could see that the skin was smooth, like a dolphin, but with these bulging veins all over. At the end of the skinny arms were long, thin fingers that wouldn't stop moving. They looked like jellyfish tentacles, wiggling all over the place. If it weren't for that massive head, it would almost have looked human, although someone extremely malnourished with knobby knees. Soon enough, I was only ten feet away, and I realized that this thing had no mouth or nose, just this empty space where they should be. At this time, those deep black eyes were dead-locked straight on me. I felt a ringing in my ears that began to grow sharper and louder with each step forward. The sound vibrated in my skull and surrounded me completely. It started to turn into a low hum. The figure began to vibrate a bit as well, and I couldn't look away from those piercing eyes. Even though I was initially scared and confused, the sound started to calm me. It sounded like a terrifying lullaby, and I felt hypnotized as I crept closer and closer. Suddenly a bright white light began to shine down from the sky. It blinded me for a moment, so I bent down and I covered my eyes with my hands. After the initial shock of the white flare, I peered out from my fingers. The creature was gone, and the trail was pitch black again. I used my headlamp to scan the area, but I couldn't see anything besides the trees, the rocks, and the distant mountains. I took a deep breath, and I immediately regretted it. There was a strong stench, almost like rotting eggs and mulch. I couldn't see anything that could have caused the smell, and I think it could have been from the thing I saw. Once I regained my composure, I turned around and I walked back to the campsite. I couldn't sleep that night. I didn't even go into my tent. I just sat there, staring at the fire the entire night and into the morning. I decided to pack up and head home a few days early. I just couldn't explain what I had seen without sounding crazy, even to myself. I wanted to just forget the creature. I wanted to just leave it in the park and carry on like normal. But even now, every time I close my eyes to go to sleep, all I can see are those black eyes staring back at me. A few times I even woke up in a cold sweat, the sound of that eerie hum still ringing in my ears. This went on for a week, and then one night, it just stopped. It took me a few more weeks to really come to terms with what I had seen, but eventually I started doing some research to try to figure out what it could have been. After going through countless blog posts, forum threads, and hitting a lot of dead ends, I had to face the fact that I'd seen an alien. There have been a few sightings here in Montana, especially in Glacier. That bright beam of light must have been its ship. Strangely, lately, I've been thinking of going back to the park. I'm starting to not be scared, which actually worries me. Like, does that thing have some control of my mind? The more I think about it, the more certain I am that there are more of its kind out there. And probably more are coming. If any of you out there have had similar experiences, I'd love to hear about them. Thanks for listening to mine. Hi, Lilith. I think my affinity for these stories began when I saw my first cryptid back in 1973. I was only 11 years old, but that day has stuck with me for my entire life. The image of the creature was burned into my mind, and I became mildly obsessed with trying to see it again. Well, now it's nearly 50 years later, and yesterday, I came into contact with this beast once again. I was born and raised in Albany, New York, and I've always been curious about nature and animals. I spent a great deal of time exploring the Albany Pine Bush Preserve. We're situated right between the Catskills and the Adirondacks, and there are tons of trails throughout the area. 
I'm going to start with my first interaction with the creature way back when, and then tell you all about what went down yesterday. It was the 1970s, so things were a bit more wild and free. I would spend most of my days running around with friends and my brother in the city and the surrounding suburbs, buying candy and playing pranks on the store owners. Some summers we would stay over at my aunt's house, which was just down the road from Pine Bush. The summers were amazingly fun, and we felt like we had a whole preserve to ourselves. After what we encountered, I knew that wasn't true. The most interesting part of the preserve are the sand dunes. And now we are right smack dab in the middle of upstate New York. You don't expect the soil to look like a beach. The barren sands are often going up in smoke since they're so dry and desolate. But there's a great deal of critters living in these woods even on the dunes. So I went out exploring one day by myself because my brother was at horse camp or something. I was walking through the sandy terrain when I saw a dog on the top of a dune. I tried calling over to it, thinking it had gotten lost or away from its owner. It didn't move when I called, so I started towards it. From a distance, it looked like any old dog, maybe a greyhound or a rottweiler or a massive chihuahua. It was skinny, and I could see the shadows of its ribcage sticking out from under its skin. It was blackish-brown with tall legs and a long snout. And as I walked towards it, it began to growl at me. I started to see it clearer now, and it had a scaly reptilian skin. And it was definitely not a dog. I was a scared little kid at the time, so I backed away slowly. Well, actually, I think any sane person would have done the same. And then the thing started to move towards me, and it moved low to the ground, and it stuck out this long, pink tongue. It turned to run. I never looked back. I don't think it ended up chasing me, and I never saw it again. And like I said, this day stuck in my mind for the rest of my life. I told my friends and my family about what I'd seen. Nobody believed me. They thought I was making the story up for attention. I never went walking in the woods after that, but for the rest of my life... I stayed curious, and all those years, it wasn't until just yesterday that I saw it again. I was driving past the preserve on my way to make some deliveries. I work as a postman these days, and I take a few routes that take me out into the more desolate parts of the county. I was going about 65 when I spotted it, but I slowed down right away. There was a dead deer carcass on the side of the road. It had been there for at least a day. I'd seen it as I passed by the day before. It was bloated and very clearly a buck, decently sized with a pair of half-grown antlers. The creature that I saw was ripping at it, and it was barely recognizable as a deer at this point. It sunk its teeth in, and it used its long tongue to lap at the coagulated blood. It was disgusting. I looked at it in my rearview mirror, and I just could not believe it. I started to put my truck into reverse so I could get a closer look. I pulled back slowly, but the thing did not pay any attention that I was getting closer. My windows were open, the smell of rotting flesh and sewage wafted into the truck. I tried to hold my breath, but it was just a horrible smell that started to make my eyes water. It was so bad. I closed them for a moment to try to push out the tears, and when I opened them again, the creature was approaching my car. I sat there for a moment and I stared at it. It walked right towards my truck's door and sat just about six feet away. Now I got a really good look at the thing. And I didn't even have a chance to notice the smell because my heart was racing so fast. This thing was hideous and drooling. Its entire face and neck and chest were covered in the blood and guts of the deer. Its ears flicked back and forth and its back arched like it was going to pounce. Once I saw that, I knew I had to get out of there. I stepped on the gas and it started actually chasing after me. I thought maybe I could lead it into town or towards the ranger station so someone could get a photo or shoot it. I kept starting and stopping, going at about 30 miles an hour, and the thing was keeping right up with me. Eventually, another car started to come towards me and I flashed my brights to signal them. Once the thing heard the engine of that car, it ducked back into the brush. And it was gone, and I don't think that cart even got a look at it. Probably didn't even know what was going on. I hope maybe they did, though, so at least someone else will know what I'm talking about. 
My family is pissed that I'm back at it again with this thing, but I hope you guys will appreciate the story. Let me know what you think. So let me tell you, it's been a real comfort tuning into your channel. It makes me feel less like I've lost my marbles. But I'll be straight with you, it doesn't mean I'm about to go traipsing through any mountains, caves, or even just the wilderness again. Heck, sometimes I don't even want to step out of my house after what I saw. My friends think I've gone off the deep end. My family, too. My buddies reckon I'm just trying to get attention. And the cops? They straight up told me to come up with a better prank and maybe see it shrink. But I'll tell you exactly what I saw, and I think you'll believe me. People need to know about this. Everywhere. So here's the story. I was traveling through North Dakota about two and a half hours from my house. I'm not much of a wanderer, usually, but I'd recently gone through a divorce. I just needed some fresh air, maybe even some nice scenery to take my mind off things. I parked my car and I just started walking. I didn't follow any specific path, I just made my own. I had my phone set to track my route so I wouldn't get lost. As I was wandering, I got some pretty nice shots of the vast plains, some interesting rock formations, even a prairie dog. I was really enjoying myself just breathing in the fresh air and making my own way. So I'd been going for about two hours when I saw a large hole in the side of the hill. It wasn't too far from me, and it was a manageable climb. So I stopped and decided to go. And when I got to the hole, I stuck my head in, and it was pitch black. I was intrigued. So I turned on my phone's flashlight, and that's when I realized this was a legitimate cave. I got a little carried away, thinking about how I had discovered a cave, wondering if anybody else had ever stopped and been up here. I was excited. Of course, I ducked down and I went in. I went in a few feet. I was being super careful, but I could see a smooth rock floor beneath me. I felt safe enough, so I kept walking forward and following the light from my flashlight, taking a picture here and there. I was maybe 15 or 16 feet in when I realized it was a huge cavern, a cave room, and there were a few openings in the walls surrounding the cavern. I picked the closest one, and I looked in there. It was another tunnel. I could tell it was big enough to walk through, so I stepped through the opening and carefully walked a few more feet in. I then heard a skittering sound. I stopped walking, thinking maybe I had kicked something, or a small animal was running away. I looked all around on the ground, but I saw nothing. But I heard the skittering again. And when I raised my phone up to look ahead of me, I saw a full figure. Only it wasn't a person but it didn't have any clothes on, and it looked malnourished. It was crouched down on its hands and its feet about four feet in front of me. It was pale, like maybe it had never even ever been in the sun. Its face was sunken in, and I could clearly see its cheekbones. And it had all black eyes, not just pupils like us, but all black. Between its hands on the ground was a half-eaten prairie dog. I don't want to get too detailed because some people may have weak stomachs. I honestly thought I might hurl. I then heard the skittering sound again and I realized that the thing that I was seeing was making the noise. I watched as it went across the floor. And I don't know how I knew, but I knew that it was trying to get its friends or family. Basically backup. But it was trying to communicate and not with me. I moved back towards the way I came, but I kept my flashlight on it. It didn't seem to like the light too much. It didn't even try to move towards me at all when I had that shown on it. I was able to get back out through the hole, and I took a quick look around. I didn't see anything else. I then ran for my life back the way I came. I could hear skittering, and it was getting closer and louder. It sounded to me like there were now more than one. I now felt like that prairie dog, like I was being hunted. I was able to see the light from the original opening when I tripped. I dropped my phone. I'm not even going to lie. I didn't even try to pick it up. I got right on up and got out of that hole, out into the sunshine. I ran down that hill. I was panting so hard, but my adrenaline would not let me stop. I only stopped when I was sure nothing had followed me out. 
I realized now I had no phone and no idea where I was. But honestly, I was just happy to be alive. I did eventually find a trail, and I managed to make it back to my car. I drove on ahead down the road and ended up in a small town where I went to the local police station. But that was pointless. They wouldn't take me seriously, so I just asked them my way back home and headed there. When I got home, I was able to check the phone's location. When I used the satellite feature, all I could see was a heavily wooded area. No cave. The last time I checked the location of my phone, it had moved over a mile away from the original place I had dropped it. It only had about 3% battery left, so it's long since died since then. But that's what happened. I feel like I could have been eaten by that thing. I'm so lucky that I didn't freeze up and was able to get out of there. I honestly wish I had taken a picture when I first saw that pale figure. I didn't even think about it. Because, guess what? All of my other pictures uploaded to the cloud. Anyway, please guys, don't go into any unexplored caves. Especially not by yourself. I mean, even caves that have been explored are probably dangerous. I know I'll never go in one again. In August of 2017, my family and I were on a road trip to the Grand Canyon from Los Angeles. The drive is simpler than most would think once you get out of L.A. Once you do, the congestion isn't too bad and there are manageable speed limits. I had my Toyota Highlander packed with my family, my wife, and two kids. Also, we set off early around 4 a.m. to avoid the L.A. traffic, which helped a ton. We found the city unusually quiet at that hour. The highway was almost deserted. It was a rare sight to see L.A. without its characteristic hustle and bustle, and I savored the tranquility, rolling down the window to enjoy the cooler morning breeze. The lack of construction work was also a pleasant surprise, and we had a smooth ride out of the city. My wife and kids dozed off quickly, leaving me to enjoy some quiet time. We crossed the city limits without any hiccups, and then I eventually stopped at a 24-7 diner to grab a cup of coffee for the road. Then we were out to the open highway, with barely any vehicles in sight. I've never been a fan of driving, but this was different. The open road, the quiet, the lack of traffic, it was almost therapeutic. We reached our first rest stop about an hour into the drive. The kids were still asleep, so my wife and I took turns using the restroom. The rest stop was eerily quiet, with only a few other cars and a couple of trucks parked. I took a short walk around the parking lot to stretch my legs before we hit the road again. About 20 minutes later, we were back on the open highway surrounded by vast stretches of desert. And then suddenly, I caught some movement and saw something dark dart across the road and I couldn't avoid it. I hit the brakes, but it was too late. My first thought was, what was that? A coyote? I pulled over, which woke my wife in the process. I told her I thought I hit something, but then when I looked in the rearview mirror, I didn't see anything at all. It was still a little dark, though, and the highway was poorly lit there, so I decided to get out and look around using my phone's flashlight. I hesitated for a moment, the darkness and the silence unnerving me. I slowly walked back to where I thought I had hit the animal. And there, about ten feet from the car, I spotted a pale, sack-like object in the desert scrub. As I approached the sack, it suddenly sprang to life and darted towards a nearby cluster of cacti. I was stunned, trying to comprehend what I was seeing. Turns out the sack was some creature with its skin pale, almost luminescent in the moonlight. The thing moved on all fours at this incredible speed, with its limbs elongated and thin, which gave it an eerie, spider-like appearance. The body was thin, almost skeletal, and it moved with this strange fluidity that was both fascinating and terrorizing. I couldn't make out its face clearly, but I saw large black spots that could have been eyes. They were round and shiny like two obsidian stones embedded in the skull. Also, it had no discernible mouth or nose, not that I could see. 
Its skin seemed to ripple as it moved like a cloth caught in the wind, and then it disappeared into the desert before I could get any closer looks. The way it moved was very unnatural, almost as if it was gliding rather than running. The sight of it disappearing into the desert, its pale form blending into the darkness, was something I will never forget. I considered following it, but then I thought better of it, remembering my family was in the car. I returned to the car, still in shock, and I told my wife it was nothing, and we resumed our journey. It took me a few days to actually share the incident with her, but then I described the creature in detail, its pale skin, the long limbs, the large black eyes, and the way it moved. She listened quietly, her eyes wide with a mix of fear and fascination. She said she believed me but I could see her mind trying to come up with a rational answer, too. I can't blame her. If I hadn't seen it myself, I wouldn't have believed it either. The encounter has since left me with this lasting impression. Now every time I close my eyes, I see that creature darting across the road, its form illuminated by headlights. I see its black eyes, devoid of emotion, its skin pale and almost glowing and then I watch it disappearing into the desert, over and over, leaving me standing there with my heart pounding in my chest. I do still question what I saw. Was it a trick of the light? Was it a hallucination brought on by fatigue? Or was it something else, something unexplainable, something that exists outside the realm of our understanding? I don't know. All I know is that it was the most bizarre experience of my life. And sometimes, I still find myself looking over my shoulder, half expecting to see those black eyes staring back at me. So, picture this. My friend Tom and I were out in the middle of Wayne National Forest in southeast Ohio when this happened. So, here's the deal. I ended up there by pure chance. And let me tell you, it was a wild ride. You see, I'm not really one for remote places and all that nature stuff. But circumstances led me there. You know, sometimes life throws you a curveball and you just have to roll with it. Well, this was my curveball. It all started a few months ago when my friend Tom, who's into all these supernatural things, invited me to join him on a road trip. He had heard rumors about some strange happenings in Wayne National Forest people going missing, eerie creature sightings, and whatnot. Now, I'm not one to believe in all that spooky mumbo-jumbo, but Tom's enthusiasm was contagious. Plus, I figured that it would be a good chance to get away from the daily grind for a bit. So off we went, driving through miles of winding roads and endless trees. I have to admit, this place felt different. The place was tucked away in the southeast corner of Ohio surrounded by dense forests and hills. It had this eerie vibe to it, too, like something out of a horror movie. But I brushed it all off. After all, that's just a bunch of stories, right? So we arrived to the forest late in the afternoon. And let me tell you, there wasn't much to see at first. But you could sense the history, like the place had stories to tell. Tom and I checked into this little motel, the kind you would find in an old movie where the protagonist gets chased by a chainsaw-wielding maniac. Classic. So we spent the first day exploring the nearby town of Haydenville, chatting with the locals and trying to dig up any juicy information about the supposed supernatural occurrences. Most of the people were tight-lipped, looking at us like we were crazy but we managed to find a few who were willing to spill the beans. They spoke to us of strange figures lurking in the woods, unsettling howls sounding at night, and even sightings of a creature they called Bigfoot. Yes, I know it sounds ridiculous, but we were there for an adventure, right? Nightfall came and we decided to head out into the woods armed with cameras, flashlights, and I was holding a whole lot of skepticism, too. Being out there at night seemed crazy to me. Anyway, we followed a trail that led us deeper into the forest with nothing but the sound of our footsteps. 
and the rustling leaves in the distance. The air grew colder and the woods grew darker as we ventured further in. It was like stepping into another world deep in the heart of the woods, where the air was thick and the shadows were dancing like they were alive. At least enough to scare the bejesus out of me. Tom and I continued, though, and we ventured further into the unknown. The forest grew denser as we pressed on, with towering trees blocking out the moonlight and creating this eerie atmosphere that sent chills down our spines. Tom, all the while, was hoping to find something, see something that would quench his thirst. To me, the silence was deafening, broken only by the faint sounds of us walking and the movements of the forest. And then, suddenly, we heard it, a low growl emanating from somewhere nearby. It was a guttural sound that seemed to vibrate through the very core of our beings. Our hearts skipped a beat as we exchanged nervous glances with each other. At least, I was nervous. I'm thinking Tom was probably excited. The reality of the situation, though, was sinking into us. We were not alone out there. And then the growling grew closer and louder, and we followed the sound guided by both curiosity and this sense of impending danger. As we crept through the undergrowth, our senses heightened and the smell of damp earth and decaying leaves filled our noses. And then, there it was, emerging from the darkness like a creature from a nightmare. The Bigfoot creature stood before us, a terrifying fusion of man and beast. Its eyes burned with an otherworldly intensity, piercing through the shadows with this unearthly glow. The creature's body was massive, towering above us on two powerful hind legs, while its arms extended into grotesque claws. The fur was dark and a matted mess blending seamlessly with the shadows all around it. The beast's snout was elongated with sharp, glistening teeth protruding from its jaws, and its ears twitched, homing in on every sound as if it were acutely aware of our presence. I tell you, it was a sight that froze the blood in our veins. The creature possessed an aura of primal ferocity, a force of nature that defied all reason and comprehension. We stood there, paralyzed by fear and fascination, unable to tear our eyes away from this beast. And then the tables turned between me and Tom. Tom managed to find his voice and said, we should leave. His eyes never left the creature, but his suggestion fell on deaf ears with me because I was now captivated by this otherworldly creature. Was it curiosity or perhaps? Morbid fascination. I don't know, but something kept me glued to the spot. And then, with an unexpected grace that did not match the monstrous form, the creature began to move. Each step it took was a reminder of the terrifying strength that lived within it. It moved closer to us, its hot breath fogging the cool night air. And though we were rooted in place by fear, something about the beast's demeanor began to shift. It wasn't just a terrifying creature suddenly. It also came across as a living being, maybe even more human than we had initially thought. But then it spoke. Its voice was a deep rumble that seemed to resonate from the very earth beneath our feet. It wasn't a language that we recognized exactly more a series of growls and grunts. But the intent was clear. It wasn't threatening us. It was trying to communicate. Tom and I exchanged bewildered glances, not sure what to do. The eerie silence was eventually broken when Tom cautiously stepped toward the being, clearing his throat and attempting to mimic its sounds. His attempt was met with a long, scrutinizing stare from the beast. Its glowing eyes flickered, and the tense silence was broken when it actually responded. The growls and the grunts were seemingly more patient this time. Tom attempted to respond once more a bit more confidently now. 
and then the exchange continued between them, and the tension between us all slowly dissipating. Gradually, an understanding developed. The creature was not there to harm us, but to warn us. But from what? We weren't sure. But we knew as we looked into its eyes that we needed to retreat, to get far away from that area as soon as possible. And once we understood that, we did not delay and we hightailed it out of there, back to the car. And that's where we sat and tried to comprehend what exactly happened during that most recent hour of our lives. Ultimately, that night would stay with us forever, and it would forever alter our perceptions of the world. And now, what we have confirmed are the hidden dwellers living right in our midst. This crazy encounter happened a few years ago when I was on a road trip with some friends to a town called Point Pleasant in West Virginia. Now let me tell you, Point Pleasant is known for its history and its share of spooky legends. But never did we expect that we would encounter what we did that day. We arrived in Point Pleasant on Friday evening in the fall, planning to spend a few nights in the area. Our first plan was to explore the infamous TNT area, the former World War II munition site that was said to be haunted. We wanted to hit that up first, and in the dark, to make it even more intense. So the sun was setting as we drove down the barren road leading to the destination. It was surrounded by dense woods on both sides. I remember, in retrospect, that the air had a certain eerie quality to it. As we parked our car and stepped out to look around, the silence was more than noticeable. We were armed with flashlights and also a touch of nervousness, if I was to be honest. From where we parked, we wandered along the paths towards the site, with our lights shining through the darkness. When we arrived, we simultaneously looked up at the crumbling concrete structures, looking as these old bunkers loomed over us. Suddenly, Amidst the stillness, we heard a distinct rustling sound coming from the underbrush nearby. We looked around nervously, and then the noise grew louder, and within less than a minute, out of the darkness emerged a creature that defied explanation. And yet at the same time, we all knew what we were looking at. It was the Mothman, the legendary being that is said to haunt the town. The creature stood before us, its presence commanding, mysterious. Its body was tall and slender, almost resembling a human figure, but with a very uncanny degree of the supernatural. Its skin, a dark shade, appeared to be like leathery armor, stretched tightly across the frame. And the eyes, they were the most chilling feature, glowing orbs of crimson piercing through the night. We all stood and watched in awe as the Mothman's wings unfurled from its back, spanning an incredible width that seemed to defy the laws of nature. Incredibly, its wingspan alone was enough to cast a shadow over us, blocking out the faint glow of the moon. The creature emitted an otherworldly screech, a sound that echoed through the night. It was a haunting cry. Undoubtedly a sound from a world that we would never comprehend. And yet despite its display of power, it didn't attack us. Instead, it fixed its gaze on us with an intensity that made it feel that something could happen. It was as if the Mothman had a message, a warning that it desperately wanted to convey. We were captivated, caught in a moment wondering what it wanted. And then with a powerful stroke of its wings, it took flight and ascended into the black night sky. As it vanished, we were left standing there, our minds reeling with a mix of awe and fear and curiosity. We knew that what we had witnessed was not just a figment of our imagination or an elaborate prank. It was real, and its presence carried a weight that we could not ignore. In the days that followed, we delved deep into research about the Mothman, eager to unravel the truth. We discovered that sightings of it had been reported throughout history, often preceding tragic events or disasters. 
able to predict doom. As we dug deeper, we uncovered additional stories of the Mothman's appearances in Point Pleasant decades earlier. The townsfolk had witnessed the creature in the months leading up to the Silver Bridge collapse in 1967, a tragedy that claimed the lives of 46 people. We learned that the Mothman's presence seemed to be linked to other catastrophic events as well, raising questions about its nature and purpose. In the end, the encounter left us with an indelible mark, one that reminded us of the thin veil that separates the known from the unknown, and how easily our perception of reality can be shattered. Each one of us had our lives changed that night. Amazon Rainforest, August of 2022. My name is Rosa, and I have an extraordinary tale to share about an encounter I had in the Amazon rainforest. I'd been on a research expedition with my team. It was a biannual event for us, and this year was the Amazon, and a humid afternoon the day that it happened. We had started our journey from a riverbank at the edge of the rainforest. I remember that the air was heavy and the sound of leaves and distant animal calls filled the air. We followed a narrow path that led us deeper into the heart of the rainforest. At one point, as we made our way through a dense part of the forest, my eyes were scanning everywhere. I was always on the lookout for any signs of rare species and anything out of the ordinary. But little did I know that I was about to encounter something truly extraordinary. With all of my enthusiasm, I was in the front and moving more quickly than the rest of the team, by quite a bit of distance. At one point, I reached a small clearing and I started walking to the center. While I was making my way there, I glanced across the clearing towards the trees on the other side. And suddenly, I froze in my tracks. Standing behind one of the trees about 50 feet away from me was a creature that resembled a large bird but one that was covered in scales. It was enormous, and as I looked, I could see the face of a lizard in shiny green scales and a long, powerful set of wings. But its eyes were wide and curious, and it stood on two legs just like a human. At first, fear washed all over me, and my body felt like it was glued to the ground. But as I studied the creature, I realized that it didn't seem aggressive or dangerous. In fact, it looked just as surprised to see me as I was to see it. The encounter lasted for what felt like an eternity, but it was probably only a few minutes. We stood there, locked in a gaze as if trying to understand each other. As I stood there, staring at the creature in awe and disbelief, I couldn't help but notice its immense size. It must have been at least eight feet tall, towering over me like a giant. Its body was covered in thick, shiny green scales, which blended perfectly with the surrounding trees and foliage. Its powerful wings hung down by its sides, almost touching the ground. At first, my heart raced with fear. The stories I had heard about mythical creatures flashed through my mind. But as I observed the creature more closely, I noticed that it seemed to have a gentle expression in the large, almond-shaped eyes. I would say it seemed curious rather than threatening. It then took a step forward, cautiously closing the distance between us. I held my breath, unsure of how it would react. To my surprise, it didn't move any closer. Instead, it stood there, tilting its head slightly as if trying to understand my presence. Feeling a mixture of fear and fascination, I decided to take a small step backward, hoping to create some distance between us. To my relief, the creature mirrored my movement, showing no signs of aggression. It was as if it understood my intentions and didn't want to scare me away. We continued this slow dance, taking turns stepping back and observing each other. It was a surreal experience, like being part of a silent conversation between two beings from different worlds. Time seemed to stand still as we remained locked in our gaze. The rainforest around us was hushed as if holding its breath, creating an atmosphere of enchantment and mystery. It almost felt like I'd entered a different realm, a place where mythical creatures live. Despite the fear lingering within me, I couldn't help but feel a sense of joy, though, also. 
I was witnessing something extraordinary, a moment that most people could only dream of. But as much as I wanted to stay and delve deeper into the encounter, a part of me knew it was time to retreat. With a final glance at the creature, I slowly turned around with my heart pounding in my chest, and I made my way back to where my team was still working their way through the forest. My mind racing with a mix of emotions. I couldn't wait to share my encounter with them, to describe in vivid detail what I had just experienced. Thinking about it, it felt like it had lasted an eternity, but it was probably only less than five minutes. I told them everything that happened. They could see the truth of it in my eyes. I know they could as I recounted every detail from the creature's appearance to our silent communication. The group listened intently, hanging on to every word, it seemed. Some were amazed. Others remained skeptical. But then as a group, we all continued back to the clearing. But despite all of us looking around, we found no further signs of the creature. The rest of the day passed by in a blur, a mix of breathtaking scenery and laughter with my team. We concluded our journey as planned, reaching our campsite just as the sun began to set that day. And even though each member of the team emotionally had a different response to the encounter, it was still a reminder that there is the unknown lurking within the depths of the rainforest. We all agreed still that it was a day we would never forget. And for me, a day that had affected me deeper than I could have ever imagined. I can honestly say it changed all of my future research. I'm now much more open to things I didn't think I could understand. Berkeley Springs, West Virginia, September 1979. I grew up in Martinsburg, West Virginia, which is really close to the border between West Virginia and Maryland. As a child, my dad took all of us kids, boy or girl, over to the wildlife preserve in Berkeley Springs to go hunting during hunting season. It was a 15-minute drive from our house, which was convenient, but the preserve itself was gigantic, and back then it wasn't even close to as fenced off as it is today. Dad hunted for all sorts of creatures back in 79 when there weren't many regulations to follow. We could go after whatever we wanted, whenever, and it didn't really matter how old we were. Usually, my dad would get some deer and turkey, saving the meat for future meals. But on this trip, he was looking for bobcats to trade some fur in the area. As he always did, he got us up from our beds at about 5 a.m., handed us all some buttered toast and a glass of orange juice, and we were on our way, all five of us. Mom got to stay home with the new baby. The two kids under 13 didn't handle guns, so they stuck to Dad while he hunted. They just learned from him as we all did. We three teenagers had rifles, and we were sent on our way. We knew the area like the back of our hands. We just wandered off in different directions, all looking for bobcats. Dad said that he could get some good money for the furs, and since the holiday season was around the corner, we were itching to find as many as we could. I wandered south, away from everybody in the family. I was the middle child of the five on the trip. I was 13 and not the biggest hunting buff, but I still was willing to do whatever Dad told me. I was definitely the odd one out when it came to our very American heritage, but my family didn't bully me about it, and I could have said no if I didn't really want to go. I wanted to see if I could be like everybody else. I figured if I went in the opposite direction of everyone, the more bobcats there would be for me to hunt and grab. I passed a pond and a few other clearings, and then I would end up back in the thick of the woods. It was still early morning, now about seven, when I finally came upon what sounded like an animal stirring in the bushes on a small rock path above my head. I hid myself against the rock to give the animal a chance to walk its way down to my level. But after a few seconds, nothing. I was confused because I knew I heard something coming, and there was only one direction it could have come from. I thought I should take a look to see if I could shoot it quick from the level where I was standing. 
As I peeled away from the wall, I looked up and came face to face with what appeared at first to be a dog. The eyes, though, and some of the features were almost human. The head was the size of two of mine. I was so stunned I couldn't even scream. I just dropped my rifle with the gun going off as it hit the ground. This really angered the beast because suddenly it began to sneer at me, and then it stood up on the edge of the rock to reveal how massive it actually was. At least seven or eight feet tall with claws that could rip me in half. The fur was black, like it hadn't bathed in months. Its eyes never left me as it began to make its way down the rock to the forest floor. Even its feet were massive, and I could hear its footsteps crashing into the ground. I was breathing so erratically at this point that I began to hyperventilate. This was no wolf, I thought. This was almost werewolf-like. But it was a sunny morning, and not the full moon. I could see the thing clear as day as it made its way around the rocks and towards me. But as it got within a few feet, I was unable to contain my fear any longer. I mean, I was only a kid at the time. And that's when I heard another bit of movement from the path that I came from followed by a familiar voice, my oldest brother. Before my brother was able to approach and see us both standing there, the creature looked in his direction, turned, and took off, climbing back up the hill and out of sight. It happened so fast, but it felt like I had been standing there for years. I was shaking and still staring off at the trees in the distance as my brother came over to me. He had to snap me out of it by grabbing my shoulders and saying my name over and over. He had heard the gun go off and knew that one of us had to be there. He wanted to see if we had caught something. But when he looked at my face, which was stained with tears, I didn't even know I had cried. I couldn't speak. That's when he knew something else had happened. He then guided me back to the main area where the truck was parked, and he stayed with me until everybody got back. When my dad saw me, he said it looked like I had seen a ghost. I told him. I did. I never went hunting with them again, and no one ever mentioned seeing what I saw on any of their future trips. Luckily, Dad just chalked it up to hunting not being something that I was meant to do. But really, that creature was so angry. I was afraid that if it ever saw anybody with a rifle again, it would eat them whole. That experience completely reshaped my life. I'm the only one of my siblings that left West Virginia. Now, I live in the city. It was the summer of 2013, and a storm had just passed through Vermont a few days before I was set to head out to an area where I love to camp. I was expecting a few of my buddies to join me for a long weekend in the woods. The storm had us worried about the state of the park and the surrounding area, but on the bright side, it had broken a heat wave that had been going on for weeks. The forecast now promised a cooler but clear weekend, so we decided to go anyway, despite the potential mess we could find. So on Friday night, we set off, but we were so engrossed in our conversation that we arrived after dark, because we missed the turnoff to the campground. Thankfully, there was a full moon that night, and you could see the outlines of the trees around us, which helped us to find our way. I remember being reminded of how much I loved it there, and that it's definitely not a bad place to stay, even if there is a bit of mud. We got some food cooking over an open flame pit and settled in to enjoy the weekend, hopefully without any more rain. The hours passed with nothing but conversation that night until somebody pointed out how noisy the woods were becoming. My ears perked up immediately at the sounds of birds chirping, insects buzzing, and other creatures doing who knows what in the night. I've spent plenty of time in the woods, but this was a first for this time of day. Or should I say, night. But it didn't really concern me, not at that point. We were all starting to get tired and most of us began to drift off. I remember hearing one of my friends try to stifle a yawn as he said goodnight. We headed to our tents, rolled out our mats and sleeping bags, and settled in. I can't tell you exactly when it happened, because I fell asleep before everybody else. But somebody must have said something, 
because I remember hearing somebody talking and another person shushing them to be quiet. As I continued to drift in and out of consciousness, I then heard my friends out at the campfire calling for me. It definitely sounded like something bad had happened, so I jumped up from my tent and ran over. They told me that they were out there, sure that something was lurking around the campsite. They had heard strange rustlings in the bushes, but it wasn't until they saw a set of yellow eyes peering back at them that they really got scared. We all agreed to stay near the campfire and huddled around so that whatever was out there would know we were a group. I sat with my friends for over an hour as we tried to keep each other awake, watching for this thing, whatever it was. At some point, somebody mentioned that it might have left since we hadn't seen it again. But I think everybody just assumed that it had gone into the woods, but that it could be coming back. At any rate, we didn't want to take the chance of letting ourselves get too relaxed, and we decided to take shifts sitting out and keeping watch. Just after agreeing to the plan, the next thing to happen was the scariest minutes of my life. Off to our right was a loud growl and the ground rumbled below our feet. Before we could even scream, the creature with yellow eyes came rushing at us, but with such a speed that we didn't even see it coming at first. It was so fast, and my memory is actually blurry, but the creature looked like a dog man with black fur and glowing eyes. It was on top of us before we knew what was happening, and it just kept going from one of us to the next, swiping its claws at us and stomping its feet. It worked its way around our group, charging at each and every one of us, although it never touched anyone. Each of us have different memories of that night, but I remember that all my head could focus on was the way the thing moved. It's like when you watch one of those dog agility courses and you watch how they weave in and out without ever bumping into anything. This creature moved like that, so swift and stealthily, and only by standing on its back legs the whole time. It basically used its arms and hands like a human or an ape would, and it had to be seven feet tall, standing on its hind legs. Its yellow eyes burned through me. I could feel them even when I was looking around at my friends. Combine all of this with a growl so loud that I couldn't think clearly. The creature had finished its attack on everybody and then began walking toward me with its head down, like a bull ready to charge at anybody foolish enough to stand in front of it. And just then, it stopped dead in its tracks and lifted its head up. Without saying a word, it then looked over its shoulder and turned and ran back into the woods. I've never seen anything move that fast or jump that high before. The strangest part was how quiet it was when it ran off. There weren't any footsteps like you would expect from something that heavy running through the middle of the forest at night. It literally made no sounds at all except for its breathing, which sounded more dog-like than human-like at this point, but it still had an edge to it even if it didn't sound angry. We all sat there shaking and unable to talk at first, and then one of us, I don't remember who, said that they had heard the creature speaking in their heads. They said that it was really strange, like they could understand its thoughts, but it wasn't English. They couldn't even put it into words. Others of us had the same experience, but others didn't. It's crazy how we each experienced it differently. Either way, we were all now terrified, and those of us able to function packed up the stuff and got us out of there. For whatever reason, we all came to the conclusion that the creature just wanted us to leave its land, but that it didn't want to hurt us. I wonder if we were too close to its lair, or maybe we had just surprised it. I guess we'll never really know. And thank goodness nothing bad happened to any of us, but during the encounter, it was nothing short of terrifying. We honestly had no idea if we would live or die, and that is not a feeling that goes away easily. It wasn't until the next day that we heard the rumors about other strange creature sightings in the area and realized that's what came at us. Knowing that others had also had an encounter gave us confidence to reach out, to ask what did other people think happened. 
We even tried to file a report with local authorities, but they dismissed our concern and told us to head back home and get some sleep. None of us believed that it was something normal, like a bear. We all believed that seemingly unknown creatures are real. We believe they exist in that area. I was way too shaken up to even think about going back to those woods for a few months. But now, I'm back at it. Call me crazy, but somehow I feel that I'm more prepared. And now I know what's likely to happen if I ever see one again. Most of my friends haven't been out again. I'm not sure if they'll ever be able to go back to the woods. But we'll see. I was just a 25-year-old young man in 1965 with a seemingly simple job as a long-haul truck driver. My usual routine involved spending days and nights crossing vast distances, hauling freight across the country in my rig. Most of my nights I would spend reading as I loved to read and learn anything and everything I could. This would come in handy to me, as you will soon learn. Over time, I witnessed a ton of strange oddities on the road, most of which I had been able to rationalize and forget. But one experience in Minnesota, in a little town that's now faded in my memory, managed to permanently imprint itself in my mind. A tale so strange that it shattered my perception of reality. This seemingly simple little place presented an unexpected mystery. The locals, Tight-knit and familiar with each other spoke in hushed whispers about strange occurrences in the nearby woods. Their stories painted vivid images of eerie lights radiating from the sky, a bizarre entity with enormous black eyes, and a skin texture resembling a reptile. Intrigued and unable to resist the unknown, my curiosity drove me to explore. Always the skeptic, I found it hard to fathom the existence of extraterrestrial beings. Yet a persistent, nagging feeling at the back of my mind convinced me that there might be something interesting about these reports. So I decided to put on my amateur detective hat and look deeper into these sightings in the town's surrounding woods. I ventured into the wilderness armed with only my truck's CB radio for company and it wasn't long before the radio began to hum with unusual frequencies. The static-filled airwaves were guiding me deeper into the heart of the woods, and it was there, as I rounded a bend deep in the woods, that my skepticism crumbled. The creature stood before me, and it was exactly as it had been described. Small, human-like, with incredibly large, haunting black eyes and this strange reptilian texture to its skin. It was crouched there off to the side next to a large rock, studying me as intently as I was studying it. There was a distinct curiosity in its gaze, and it seemed incredibly intrigued by me. And then before I could make sense of this crazy scene, this deafening hum filled the air and a blinding light came over everything. And just as soon as it appeared, the creature was now gone, leaving me staring at the empty spot now. The surreal encounter left me dazed, struggling to comprehend what had just happened. I made the conscious decision to not spread panic by sharing the encounter back in town but yet I couldn't shake the nagging feeling that I had stumbled upon this crazy secret of colossal proportions. As I sat there looking out the windshield, I couldn't help but wonder what in the world just happened. I was a truck driver, not a government agent, not a scientist, certainly not equipped to unravel this crazy thing. And yet my memory of the counter was undeniably real and forgetting about it was not an option. I chose to quietly return to town holding the information close to me and maintaining ignorance about knowing anything about the event. But in my mind, I constantly replayed the encounter. So then after I finally left the town, the quiet nights on the road offered me the perfect opportunity for my research. I poured over books, articles, and reports on UFO sightings, alien encounters, and suspected government cover-ups. 
The more I learned, the more I was convinced of the craziness of my experience. It seemed I had inadvertently uncovered the actual secret that perhaps even the government wanted to bury. But what could a truck driver do about it? I recognized that my job, my stability, and possibly even my sanity were at risk if I were to step too far into this phenomenon. The alien encounter, although intriguing, was far beyond the scope of my ordinary life. So then I decided to just continue with my life. Days turned into weeks, weeks into months, and months into years. As the memory of it in Minnesota began to feel like a distant dream. I did go on driving my truck, crossing state lines, meeting new people, living the life of an ordinary truck driver. I began to regard that alien encounter as a personal secret, a unique adventure just for me. But yet it left this mark on my psyche that I couldn't ignore completely. Every unusual frequency on the radio, on the CB, every bright light in the sky, Every mysterious story shared by a fellow trucker gave me this thrilling reminder of the secret that I held. In the end, I might just be a truck driver, but I'm also now this silent guardian of the secret, a living witness to an extraordinary event that questioned the understanding of the universe. Even now as I drive on the deserted roads in the dead of night, no matter where I am, I find myself gazing at the expanse of the sky. I'm wondering if somewhere out there, that creature is looking back at me. St. Cloud, Florida, October 2018. I'm going to tell you this crazy thing that happened to me at the Walmart Supercenter in St. Cloud, Florida. We're talking less than 10 miles to Kissimmee and about 20 from Disney, just to give you an idea of the area. Yeah, I know crazy things happen in Walmarts all the time, but listen to this. My name's Johnny, and I've been a trucker for about 15 years now. I've had various gigs riding all over the country, from coast to coast, from the hills to the woods, you name it. I've been there. I say all that to let you know that I'm not exactly green when it comes to bizarre experiences. But there I was that night parked at the super center for an overnight. It was about 11 p.m. It was chilly that night and I was just about to hit the sack after munching on some leftover chicken wings from my lunch. Not the healthiest choice, I know. Now I'm sure you get it though, these stops aren't exactly five-star hotels. But after a while, you get used to it. You get used to the hum of the generators, the flickering neon lights, and even occasional weird noises. But this night? Oh boy, was this night different. I was in my cab just settling down when I heard this rustling noise from outside, near the back of the cab. At first I thought it was just the wind playing tricks, or maybe some raccoon got into the trash cans. You know how they can be, always messing around and looking for a free meal. So I ignore it, and I try to get comfortable, trying to sleep. But then the noise gets louder, and I hear this this low growl. I'm not talking about a dog growl or a raccoon hiss. I'm talking about a deep, rumbling growl that didn't sound like any animal I had ever heard. My gut tells me that something isn't right, and now I'm worried someone's messing with my truck. So my heart starts racing and I decide to get out and check it out. I'm no chicken. This is my truck. They don't know who they're messing with with their life by bothering me. I grab my flashlight and I carefully step out of the cab. The cold night air hits me hard in the face, but I'm just focused on that noise. So I'm making my way around to the far back of the truck where the noise is now, flashlight in hand, when I hear the growl again. This time it's even louder, intense, and now it feels like it's right in front of me, and also all around me, all at the same time. I must admit, in that moment, my heart is pounding. I'm a seasoned trucker, sure, but I'm also human. I know fear when I feel it. And in that moment, I'm scared. But I'm also determined. I want to know what is causing the crazy sound. As I near the back of my truck, the rustling sounds stop. 
and now they're replaced by that low, constant growl. My flashlight's bouncing on the pavement because my hands are shaky, but I keep going. And then I see it. Not a raccoon, not a stray dog. Something else. Something much bigger. Something I still struggle to believe. A creature hunched over near the edge of the truck with its back turned towards me. Its skin is scaly and glistening under the light from the overhead light and my flashlight. It's large, about the size of a grizzly, and its growls are echoing around the parking lot. I freeze. My brain is not fully processing what my eyes are seeing. This can't be real. I've heard of trucker tales about unexplained phenomenon, about cryptids and the like, but this, this is unlike anything I've ever heard. And then the thing turns, and it looks at me, its eyes glowing a harsh, stark yellow in the beam of the flashlight. It's looking right at me, and the growls are now replaced by a sort of hissing noise, and I can see the teeth, sharp, deadly. So there I am, standing mere feet away from this creature, and it's still hunched over, and its skin, from what I can see, is rough. Scales are a deep green, blending with the shadows, and then there's this sort of chilling intelligence in its eyes. The head's longer, a bit like a crocodile, but not quite. And then the eyes, they're on the sides, providing it with wide field of view. And that's scary enough just to think about that. And then there are rows of sharp teeth protruding from its mouth that reminded me like a dinosaur. And the claws, they look like they could tear through steel. The tail, which I didn't notice at first, is long and whip-like, moving around, giving the impression of a coiled spring that's going to unleash. The overall appearance is terrifying, alien, something straight out of science fiction. But I don't run. I don't scream. Instead, I stand there. Part of me wants to get right back to the cab, but another part of me is entranced by this impossible sight. The trucker in me wants to document it, to have proof to show friends and family. I slowly reach for my phone, wanting to take a picture. But the creature, almost as if it can read my mind, starts to move. Its motions are slow, but very deliberate and I watch as it retreats into the darkness, away from all the light. And then within seconds, it's gone, leaving me standing there in the dead quiet, holding my phone and a flashlight that's not doing me any good. The rest of the night, as you can imagine, is sleepless for me. I stayed in my cab, but all locked up to the gills, every sound causing me to open my eyes and look around thinking that the thing is going to return. But by dawn, I leave, and the eerie encounter is just too fresh in my mind. As I drive away, the super center fades in my rearview mirror, and I think about who I will tell first. But then the more I think about it, the crazier it sounds. And so in the end, the truth is that I haven't told anybody up until now. So there you have it. I'm sure you've heard of crazy things happening at Walmart, but I bet you never expected to hear a story like this. All I can say is, never forget to watch your back. So I took a trip to California last summer. You know, the usual tourist stuff. But I was staying in this little beach house that I had rented from the local tourist office website. It was right on the coast, and I was planning to surf and just chill out for the week. Everything was going great at first. I got there early, settled in. Everything seemed normal, just as it should. I was having a great time until the third night, when I was out on the deck grilling some burgers, and I noticed something odd. At first, it was just this smell. It was awful, like rotten fish mixed with seaweed. Just nasty. It seemed far off, but it was definitely there. Had this been the first night, I would have thought the smell was coming from the ocean. But this was something new, a smell that hadn't been there before. In fact, it got to be so bad that I decided to just eat inside once the burgers were done. But then I heard this weird sound, too. 
It was like a cry for help, but it didn't sound right. It was like someone or something was trying to mimic a human voice. Now I've seen enough horror movies to know not to go wandering off in the dark when you hear something weird, but I just couldn't ignore it. So I decided to only go as far as I could while still keeping the beach house in sight. I started walking towards the sound, and coincidentally, the smell got worse. It was like nothing I had ever smelled before and it made me want to turn back, but I kept going, strangely. And as I got closer, the sound got weirder. Now it was like a recording or something. I looked around, and then I saw it. A silhouette in the moonlight. It was huge, way too big to be a person. I couldn't get a good look at it, but when I saw the shape and the size of it, I knew nothing good was going to come from that thing. So that's when I turned around and booked back to the beach house. The next day, I went to the local tourist office to tell them what happened, to see if there had been any other reports or sightings of anything strange. The guy there didn't seem interested until I got into some of the details and mentioned the size of the thing. And that's when he went pale and offered me a refund if I wanted to leave early. Now, I've never heard of getting a refund for spotting something weird, but I decided to just stay put to see how the next day went. But after that first night, I was pretty shaken up, but I still decided to stick it out just that one more day. I mean, I didn't want to let one weird experience ruin my trip. But that coming night, things got even weirder. I was inside watching TV when I heard that same cry for help. This time it was way closer, like it was right outside the beach house door that faces the ocean. I cautiously stood up and looked out the window, and there it was, standing on the beach close to the house, silhouetted against the moonlit waves. This time I got a better look at it. It was massive, like eight feet tall, and it had these long, spindly arms that ended in claws. And the face, well, it didn't have one. Just this gaping hole where its face should have been. I was wide-eyed just watching this thing on the beach. But then it started moving towards the house even closer. And its movements were jerky and unnatural. I could hear it making that weird cry for help over and over like a broken record. I snapped out of my fear. I ran to the other side of the house, locked all the doors, all the windows. I could hear it outside, scratching at the door now, making that awful sound. I stayed far in the back room, too scared to move, and I just waited there until the sun came up. All night long, I listened to these strange noises. Some, I'm sure, were the creature, but some, I think, were made up by my mind playing tricks on me. Either way, I did make it through the night alive and without incident. The next morning, I went out. No sign of the creature. The door was all scratched up, though, but otherwise, everything seemed normal. I sure was glad I had told the tourist office about what I had seen, given the state of the door. But I knew I couldn't stay there any longer. I packed up my stuff, and I just left. I turned in my key, and I told them I would never be back. So that's my story. I don't know what I saw on that beach, but I know it wasn't human. I also don't know where it came from. If it lives in the ocean or just nearby or what. All I can say is that if you ever find yourself on the California coast, be careful. And if you smell something rotten, get out of there fast. You don't want to meet whatever it is that I saw. Hi, Lilith. I need to tell you something that happened to me last year. I was sitting on my porch at my house in Washington State late at night when I heard a high-pitched whirring noise, and then I saw something quite strange. It was a vibrant blue light that appeared to be spinning, and it slowly went higher up into the sky and gradually spun faster and faster, eventually disappeared behind a cloud, and the whirring noise stopped. Fascinated, I continued looking, waiting for the light to come back, but it didn't. And then suddenly I heard a huge explosive boom, and the cloud lit up this bright green color. It was so bright it was blinding. 
The blue light was spinning so fast it looked like a bright star shooting across the sky. The green light that followed was just as spectacular. It lit up the entire cloud in this brilliant hue, and it created this incredible spectacle. I stood there amazed at the sight, completely mesmerized. I couldn't take my eyes off of it. Afterwards, I saw green lights falling from behind the clouds towards the ground. And I remember thinking that somebody has to be playing a prank on me. But it was far too epic to be any kind of a simple prank. I remember being concerned if some of the green debris would fall on somebody's house or cause a fire, but there was really nothing I could do. I was in awe and I couldn't stop gazing and wondering if I was even dreaming. I thought that was going to be the most eventful part of the night, but I was wrong. Something quite disturbing happened afterwards. A strange-looking black van drove slowly into the field in front of my house. The windows were all blacked out, and it drove very slowly. Now, I don't get many visitors in this area. Nobody really lives around me. So I got very weirded out by the van. It disturbed me enough that I went into the house, locked the door, and looked out the window. The van sat in the field for about ten minutes. Finally, I decided maybe I was being paranoid and just fixed myself some tea. But while drinking it, I kept trying to come up with a logical explanation for what I had seen in the sky. But for the life of me, I couldn't explain it. It had to be extraterrestrial. Either that or it had been some strange experimental government aircraft. But why the green explosion? I looked out the window again about 30 minutes later and the van was still sitting in the field. I called my husband, who works as a truck driver and was in a different state at the time, and I asked him what I should do. He told me it was probably nothing but to keep watching and call him if anything did happen. I hung up and tried to laugh it off, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. I went back outside and sat down on the porch. My mind was racing with the possibilities of who was in the van. I eventually told myself it was just some teenagers doing, well, teenage things in the field and laughed it off. The van suddenly then began to move. I told myself that the teenagers had finished whatever they had come to do and a sense of relief came over me. Then it drove very slowly in the direction of my house and then stopped right in front. Now my heart started pounding as I was wondering what was going on and suddenly all the doors of the van opened and four men dressed in black suits with sunglasses jumped out. I was terrified and didn't know what to do. They were all holding guns, and they started running at me. As they came closer, I could see that their faces were covered with masks. I tried to run into the house, but one of them grabbed me and dragged me back outside. They took me to the van and forced me inside. The last thing I saw before they shut the door was four more men getting out of the back of the van with rifles. And then the van drove away, leaving me alone with these masked strangers. I remember waking up after that, confused and disoriented with a pounding headache. I felt the grass on my hands, and I started to look around. Once the blurriness left my eyes, I realized I was in my front yard. I immediately ran inside and called my husband, screaming and crying. He told me to calm down and that he couldn't understand me. After taking some deep breaths and forcing myself to calm down, I was able to tell him what happened while holding back tears. I told him I thought it had something to do with the strange lights that I had seen in the sky. What are you talking about? He asked me. The blue light and the green explosion that I told you about earlier, I screamed. But there was a pause. What light are you talking about? He told me I must be in shock from the trauma and I needed to call 911. He had no recollection of me calling him earlier that night. So this experience has caused me a lot of suffering and confusion. My husband tries to be here for me, but he doesn't really understand. I think about that experience daily. And when I tell people, not many of them believe me. In fact, it has cost me a lot, including some friends and family, my career, my credibility, basically everything. I hope that I can soon heal from this experience and get some closure. I really need to move on with my life and pull everything back together. Anyway, I love your show, Lilith, and thank you for inspiring me to reach out about this experience. Thank you again. Okay, 
So it was the summer of 2021, and I decided to take a hiking trip to Yosemite National Park. Now, I've been on plenty of hikes in national parks before, but this was my first time at Yosemite, and I was psyched up to explore the iconic national park. So there I was on the first day, kitted up in my hiking gear and standing at the foot of Half Dome, looking up at the grandeur. And let me tell you, nothing, absolutely nothing, prepares you for the sheer scale of that granite rock face. It's like staring up at a giant monolith touching the skies. I started off on the Mist Trail, one of the most popular trails in the park. It's not an easy trail, mind you. It's about 14 miles round trip, but the views of Vernal and Nevada Falls are totally worth the sweat. Now, as I was hiking, I couldn't shake off this peculiar feeling. You know, that feeling when you sense that somebody's eyes are on you, but when you turn around, there's nobody there. It wasn't anything too unsettling, just a mild prickle at the back of my neck. I thought it was just the excitement of the new trail and the anticipation of the journey ahead. After about three miles in, the trail gets pretty steep. And here's where the story gets interesting. So I was climbing up this steep trail, and all of a sudden I spotted this tiny movement out of the corner of my eye. I turned, trying to get a better look but all I saw was a flash of brown disappearing into the undergrowth. Now, being in Yosemite, I knew that it could be any host of things. A deer, a bobcat. But there was something odd about that fleeting glimpse. Something I couldn't quite put my finger on. So with my heart pounding a bit, I decided to press on. Because that's what you do when you're hiking, right? You keep moving. I convinced myself it was probably just a deer, but that feeling, that strange feeling of being watched, didn't go away. Now, as I was moving closer to Vernal Fall, the trail became narrower and the surroundings quieter. It was almost serene except for the steady noise of the waterfall breaking the silence. And then, out of nowhere, I heard this weird rustling sound from behind me. I swear my heart almost leapt out of my chest. I turned around slowly, half expecting to see a bear standing there, and to my surprise, I saw nothing. Just the usual undergrowth, a few trees, and the trail that I had been walking on. The rustling sound had stopped. I must admit it spooked me a bit, but then again I was in the heart of Yosemite, surrounded by nature and its inhabitants. It's not entirely unusual to hear strange sounds or feel a bit on edge. So I just shook off the eerie feeling and I continued. But that's when things took a really weird turn. As I got closer to the falls, I saw this thing. I'm not exactly sure what it was. It was standing near the water, almost blending in with the rocks. I squinted, trying to make sense of what I was seeing. As my eyes focused, I realized it was not a rock. It wasn't an animal. It was, well, a figure and it was standing upright like a human, but it looked all wrong. It was about my height, maybe a bit taller, but its limbs were elongated and kind of distorted. Its skin was grayish-brown, almost like tree bark, and it was uncannily thin, like it hadn't eaten in weeks. The body was angular, with joints sticking out in weird places, like its anatomy didn't follow the laws of nature or something. But the face... The face was the most disturbing part. It was flat, with these two dark holes for eyes. No nose, no mouth, just these deep black pits. And it was just standing there, staring at me with those hollow eyes. Now I've been around the block a few times and I've seen my share of oddities. But this was different. This was bone-chillingly strange. The air around me suddenly grew cold, and I felt this wave of unease wash over me. I stood there, rooted in the spot, caught between curiosity and fear. We must have stayed like that in a silent standoff for what felt like an eternity. The figure never moved. It just stood there at the edge of the falls, blending with the shadows. But then, slowly, very slowly, it started to move. Not towards me, but towards the water. It moved in this strange, sort of disjointed manner, like it wasn't used to moving in its own body. 
and with each step it took, I could hear this faint, gravelly sound, like the rustling of dry leaves. And then just as it was about to reach the water, it stopped. And I kid you not, it turned its head and looked back at me, with the dark, empty eyes looking into mine. I felt this cold shiver run down my spine again. And in that moment, it was like time had stopped. It was just me and this bizarre creature locked in this silent confrontation in the heart of Yosemite. And then as quickly as the thing appeared, it leapt into the water. I was left standing there in complete and utter shock. My heart was racing. My palms were sweating. I was struggling to make sense of what had just happened. I looked around, half expecting it to pop back out of the water, but there was nothing. Only the rush of the waterfall and the chirping of the birds, like it had never been there in the first place. Strange. I never saw that creature again for the rest of my hike. I don't know what it was or where it came from. But that encounter left a deep impression on me. It reminded me that nature is full of mysteries, some beautiful, some terrifying, and some that defy all explanation. New Mexico Desert, 2015 Lilith, I've been a silent admirer of your channel for quite some time now. My buddies and I have this tradition where we share the most intriguing tales of the unexplained that we can find. More often than not, I find myself sharing a story I've picked up from your channel. So, ultimately, while I would love to introduce you to them, I fear I'd lose my edge in our friendly competition. So forgive me, but I'm going to continue to quietly absorb your content and keep it to myself. I've never had a close encounter or anything like that, but I once had this run-in with a creature that set me on the path of the paranormal. I've shared this tale with many, only to be met with disbelief and accusations. I feel that's a testament to the ignorance of some people. I appreciate the platform you've created where experiences can be shared and understood without judgment. Anyway, my uncle owns a vast expanse of desert land here in New Mexico, about a hundred acres. And over the years, we've created this epic dirt bike trail. It's got it all. Towering dunes, winding paths, a few jumps for the thrill seekers, and an endless sea of sand stretching as far as the eye can see. I find solace in the solitude of the desert. There's something about being alone in such a vast, barren landscape that brings peace. Anyway, a few years back, I was out riding late into the evening when I was hit by this foul stench. Now we've had issues with illegal dumping on the property, so I assumed I was dealing with another pile of discarded waste. I veered off the trail following the scent. It was putrid, nauseating, and it made my eyes water. The beam from my dirt bike's headlight illuminated this large creature feasting on a smaller one. I realized then that this was likely the source of the smell. As I approached, I saw that the attacking creature, though, was massive, unlike any animal that should be out in these parts, or any parts for that matter. It was easily three times the size of a large boar, but at the same time it had these scales, like a reptile. Its eyes were enormous and terrifying. The creature locked eyes with me, dropped its meal, and then began to hiss menacingly. The sounds it made were chilling. It was a guttural hiss, but then there was something eerily human about it. It started off as a low, rumbling sound, followed by a high-pitched screech. I can't quite put it into words, but I have never heard anything like it. Not just in real life, but anywhere, movies included. Fear took a hold and I started to panic. I gunned it, weaving erratically and fishtailing it as I made my way back to the trail with the creature's hissing noises echoing behind me. I eventually lost the sound and I made it back to the house safely. I then relayed the encounter to my uncle, who immediately grabbed his rifle and took me back into the desert. We found the remains of the creature's meal, but there was no sign of the beast itself. And what was odd was that the smaller creature was mostly untouched except for its stomach being ripped out. 
despite the size of the scaled beast that had been feasting on it. We checked all the trail cameras, but none had captured the creature. My uncle advised me to stay vigilant. I began researching what I had seen out there in the desert, and the closest match I could find was a creature from Australian Aboriginal mythology, known as the Bunyip, described as a large creature with scales. It's also said to inhabit swamps, billabongs, creeks, riverbeds, and waterholes. Could this same creature have somehow found its way to the desert here in the U.S.? The thought of it was terrifying. I can't say with absolute certainty that what I saw was that creature, but it's the only thing I've come across in my research that aligns with my experience. I hope never to encounter it again, but my curiosity often gets the better of me. My uncle and I have installed additional trail cameras and motion lights along the trail in hopes of capturing evidence of the creature. So far, we've only captured coyotes, rabbits, and the occasional stray dog. But the added lighting does make night riding a lot more enjoyable. So perhaps I owe the creature some thanks. Thank you for taking the time to read my story. Your channel's been a source of validation for me, and I'm sure many others. There's something deeply human about wanting to believe in the existence of the unexplained, the paranormal. While it's possible that some people may misconstrue ordinary experiences as paranormal, it's equally impossible that all of these experiences are mere fabrications. I'm a believer, and I know I'm not alone. I was riding my bike down the road here in Ross County, Ohio, when I saw the strangest creature I have ever seen. I noticed it out of my peripheral vision, and it was strikingly huge. From the direction it was headed, it looked like it was about to walk off into the woods onto some of the old logging trails that had become popular with hikers. My first impression was that it looked like a dog, at least from what I could see from far away. Now, to give you an understanding of where this took place, I was on school break from Miami University in the town of Oxford, Ohio. And I was back home with my parents, who lived right outside the city limits of Chillicothe, Ohio. Their house was off Route 23, only about three miles away from where I saw this thing. You just kind of drive by this area if you're going north or south. There's no attraction or anything here except to see the thick woods and tons of trails for hiking. I immediately stopped my bike and I stayed back, just watching this thing wander in the direction away from me. When I saw it heading to the logging trail, it was only about 50 feet ahead of me and to the right, across a wooded area that sits adjacent to Route 23, and then it stretches for miles from there up towards Columbus. Let's just say that I was horrified to be watching this thing, and I sat there thinking about how close we were living to this creature that I never would have thought believed. It also made me remember that about five years prior or so, a friend of mine who lived nearby told me that he had heard of people seeing scary creatures on those trails. I also remembered when we were younger kids playing around at night back there, we actually found a skull that was bigger than a human's or any animal that I could have imagined. And that totally freaked us all out. So back to this creature, it looked kind of like a dog from behind. But when it suddenly stopped walking and turned its head towards me, I noticed it had pointy ears and a long tail that seemed weird for its shape. It had hunched shoulders and it moved sort of strangely for something so big. It must have heard me back there, though, because when I tried to get off my bike, I tripped and I caught myself and it reacted by grunting and turning its head in my direction, but still keeping its pace. When it turned like that, I could have sworn that it looked right at me. I'm not sure if it actually saw me, though, and so I continued to put the bike down and to try to follow it quietly. But I also wanted to go fast enough to keep up with it. It seemed to travel as fast as if it was running, yet its legs were only moving at a walking pace. And then after a minute or so, it suddenly stopped, looked around, and then took off in a full run. It went so fast that I'm not sure if anything could have chased after it and caught it. 
It was gone in seconds. And even though I ran towards where it had been, there was no sign of it. I would say the whole encounter probably lasted no more than five minutes. I decided it would be best now if I just got myself out of there and headed home. So I turned around and ran back towards Route 23 to pick up my bike and head out of there. But within seconds, the creature reemerged, and it was now standing right in front of me, this time only about 20 feet away. I tried to grab the attention of a car that was driving past, but they never even slowed down, let alone stop. And then when I looked back, it had circled around and was now blocking the path ahead of me. I saw its yellow eyes glowing in the moonlight, and then it turned towards me and let out this low growl which made my heart jump. Its mouth opened slightly to reveal pointy teeth, and it stood there with a crazy grimace on its face, staring at me, as if testing me if I'd try to approach it. Of course, I had no intention of doing that. It seemed like it didn't want to eat me, thank God, but he wanted something else from me. But what? And then when the thing made another move towards me, not thinking rationally at all, I started screaming and waving my arms wildly, thinking maybe I could scare it. That was a mistake. It then became instantly furious and it raised its head as if to go after me. Not like an attack dog, but more defensive. But before it could do anything, I ran as fast as I could towards 23. I looked back for just a few seconds to see that this creature had stopped moving and now stood frozen in place, staring at me. I hopped on my bike and I took off as fast as I could, as fast as my feet would pedal. By the time I reached my parents' house, which was really only about a football field of distance away, fear was now controlling every move, and I ran inside the house, and I locked myself in there. What did the thing want from me? Why didn't it attack me? Why did it want to scare me? I told my parents about it, and they looked at me like I was crazy. But they humored me by checking out the windows for me constantly in the days after that. They never saw anything at all. But believe it or not, the thing was back again tonight, two weeks after my first encounter. And you know where I saw it? Yes, I went back looking for it in the same area. Every day since, I had biked or walked past that area hoping to see it again, but nothing until today, while walking the dog about 8 o'clock at night. This time I saw it again, but when it caught sight of our dog, it took off in a full run, looking desperate to get away, instead of just walking quickly. It turns out, I think it was totally afraid of our dog. It never looked back once as it ran full speed out of that area and up into a cornfield. But that creature is still out there somewhere, and I don't think it's going to leave me alone until I talk to somebody about it and have them properly investigate. Every time I go outside now with my dog, or alone for that matter, I look over in the direction towards that field where my encounters happened, and I wonder if the creature is watching me from somewhere. And I'm always wondering, why did you show yourself to me? What do you want from me? And now it's almost a month since that second encounter, and still nothing more. I keep wondering if it will ever show itself to me again, or to anybody else for that matter. I just want to know what it's all about. If anybody has experienced anything like what I'm describing, or if they have any information at all, please get in touch with me. North Carolina, October 2021 I'm a 46-year-old truck driver born and raised in North Dakota. I've spent most of my life on the road transporting goods from one state to another. I've seen a lot of things on those dark, lonely roads, some explainable, some not so much. But there is one encounter that still sends shivers down my spine whenever I think about it. A couple of years ago, I picked up a gig hauling construction equipment to an isolated work site near the Appalachian Mountains of North Carolina. It was late autumn, and the days were getting shorter and the nights colder. It was on the third night of this trip and well past midnight that I came across something, well, not from around here. I was driving through a heavily wooded area, the road barely illuminated by the high beams of my rig, when I saw a figure ahead. 
standing right in the middle of the road. Luckily, I was going slow enough that I was able to slow down, thinking that it might be a deer or something. But as I got closer, it was clear that this was no ordinary creature. The thing towered over the road, so much so that it was nearly a silhouette against the moonlit sky. Its height was staggering. It must have been nine or ten feet tall, and its body looked skeletal, like it was just skin clinging to bones. But at the same time, the skin did not look right. It was almost like it was decaying, rotting away in patches, revealing the horrible skeleton underneath. I couldn't figure out how this thing was even alive. It had the legs of an animal, long and bent, almost like a deer, but much larger, more robust. And then the face, it was a nightmare. It was like a skull, but also deer-like, but there was an unnatural quality to it. The eyes were just two glowing pits piercing the darkness with this terrifying yellowish-red light. And let's not forget the smell. God, the smell was unbearable. Like death, rotting meat left out in the sun for days kind of smell. It filled my nostrils and it made me gag, even with me being in the rig and it out on the road. I watched as it just stood there. And then, as it finally started to move, I noticed that it seemed to limp, favoring one leg as if it had been hurt and yet it still moved in a way that was unnaturally fluid for a creature of its size, slowly disappearing into the dense forest on the other side of the road. I shook myself out of my trance and I drove on, but my blood pressure and my heartbeat must have been through the roof, because I could hear my blood rushing in my ears. I didn't sleep that night. I couldn't get the image of the creature out of my head. The next morning, I told the construction crew about what I had seen. Most just laughed it off, but a few people's eyes got wider, and they looked worried, but they didn't say anything to let me know what they were actually thinking. My next couple of nights out, I stayed vigilant. I kept my eyes on the road, but I never saw the creature again. Since then, I've thought a lot about that night. Before the sighting, I had heard stories of course, of strange creatures haunting the wilderness. But I had always dismissed them as just that, stories. But after that night, I can't help but wonder what else might be out there, lurking in the shadows. I mean, there can't just be one of these things. Anyway, it's changed how I look at the world, made me realize that there's so much we don't understand, so much we don't know. Now I drive the highways and the back roads, always watching, always waiting for another glimpse of the unknown. Because once you have seen the inexplicable, you can't just go back to not believing. <laughs>